Welcome to TFP, the Theater Folk Podcast. I am Lindsay Price, resident playwright for Theater Folk. Hello. I hope you're well. Thanks for listening. Today we're going to talk about the difference between theater and drama in the classroom. But first, let's do some theater folk news. So, I have to say, I am pretty jazzed at what's happening over on our Facebook page. I think there's like cool stuff going on. We first of all, we have hit over 7,800 hundred followers, fans, likes, whoever you are, we adore you because that is a lot of people who don't personally know us, you know, hanging around, reading our posts, uh, putting up their own posts. I just think that's pretty cool. And it also means that we're closer to 10,000 than farther away. And we'd like to hear what you think we should do when we hit that pretty cool number, right? I remember when Craig and I started with the page, our our goal was 1,000 followers or likes or fans or whatever. And we were very, we were excited about the idea that we could hit 1,000. And, and now we've come, again, so much closer to 10 than not. So, I mean, you know, Go over to our Facebook page. Make sure you're following along. That's where we post pictures. We celebrate productions. We post drama and education articles. It's where Free Play Sunday happens. Last Sunday of every month. Free scripts. It's where you can find our blog posts and podcasts. You know, everything all in one tidy little place. It's a lovely hub of high school theater. And I just think that it it really does represent who we are uh, as theater folk, who we want to be, how we, how we want to reach out, how we want to um, be in our little community, our little our little drama geek community. I love it. And lastly, where or oh, where can you find this podcast? We post new episodes every Wednesday at theaterfolk.com and on our Facebook page, Facebook and Twitter. You can find us on the Stitcher app and you can subscribe to TFP on iTunes. All you have to do is search on that word. What's the magic word? Theater folk. Episode 40. Two, we've got a teacher interview. So today I'm talking to drama teacher Tracy Garrett. I have been visiting Tracy's classroom for uh, three years now. Oh my gosh. Okay, so and I have taught playwriting. I've worked up new plays. And we've had many conversations about what it's like to teach uh, high school drama, what the difference between drama and theater is when it comes to the classroom. So what does that mean exactly? What what does that mean uh, when we look at drama and we look at theater as it is specifically applied to education, to what happens between uh, drama teachers and drama students? So from our perspective, what Tracy and I are talking about comes down to skill sets and outcomes. In the theater classroom, students learn a a skill set that will improve their performance on stage. Projection, articulation, character analysis, physicalization, all of which are driving towards uh, production. That's the outcome uh, to produce a play. And in the drama classroom, uh, students learn a skill set that will, uh, I guess a good way to put it is improve their uh, performance in life. Improvisation to develop self-confidence. Articulation that relates to being able to speak clearly in a job interview. And the outcome here is more process driven. There may be a production, there may not. Uh, you know, Tracy, um, has her students moving towards some kind of public performance, but it's really never the driving fork focus of her classroom. And 
you know, between the two skill sets, it's the same tools and it's the same classroom, but with pretty decidedly different outcomes. And of course, in the theater classroom, the skill set can also apply to the stage and to life. It's just a matter of the direction of the class, performance or process. All right, let's get to the interview. So I am sitting here uh, on the floor of the uh, drama classroom of Tracy Garrett. Hello, Tracy. Hi there. Uh, and we're going to uh, we're going to talk shop mostly about uh, the difference between drama and theater. How long have you been a drama teacher, Tracy? Um, I've been teaching drama since I started thirteen years ago. Thirteen years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So did you set out to be a drama teacher? I, I think did you, not. You know, I thought so. Mm-hmm. You you started off. I started off thinking I was going to be an English teacher and maybe do some social studies kinds of things. That's where my my degree comes from. And um, I was doing my teaching block, my second teaching block, at a high school. And one of the teachers was going to go on maternity leave. And she said, oh, Tracy would be good in here. And I said, no, (laughs) I don't know a thing. And she said, no, 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 you'll be fine, you'll be fine. And literally just threw me in there, and I had to start from scratch with no knowledge whatsoever, zero. But uh, and what a learning curve! So and you I you learned your it. trial by fire, mm-hmm. and you fell in love with it. What did you fall in love with? Um, I think what what really hooked me was that we were exploring concepts in a very unorthodox way. Right. And so it really turned my. Uh, my definition of what teaching is, it turned it upside down, and I realized that this was the way you were going to get kids. This was the way. You know, I love literature, <laughs> but this is the way you're going to have other kids loving literature. Right. So I just knew, I knew, this is this is awesome. Let's do more of this. Awesome. And so I, I sought out to get some knowledge and some formal training and been and, uh, and 13 years right. later, here yeah, you are. Here I am. Have you always been at, you haven't always been at uh, Eastdale? Uh, Eastdale? No, I've been at Stanford, I've been at Meyer. Um, I, I did a stint at Kernaghan Park, and then I ended up at Eastdale. And how long have you been here? I think this is my seventh year. Let's say seven. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> Uh, but so, so I've been coming into your classroom, I was trying to think. I came in in the fall of 2010. So, and now we're in the spring of 2013. And you and I have had many conversations, um, a lot about just what, what it is that, that happens in the drama classroom and when is it most effective. And um, you, you work in a, in a district that uh, has a lot of schools that sort of focus on uh, the performance aspect, would yeah, you say? Yeah, I would think so. Um, you know, when I first started really teaching drama and, and having the bulk of my teaching day be drama classes, I was going to drama subject councils and meeting all these drama teachers, and I was really excited to, to learn from these people. And um, I found myself feeling very on the outside mm-hmm. of, of the conversation, mostly because my inexperience was very it was very palpable like I could really feel how uh, different I was from from the other teachers because they had put on lots of performances they had lots of experience with that and the focus was very clearly on the product right and I thought oh okay so I have to focus on the product and the the more that I went and and did some coursework for myself and I learned with various different professors the more I realized I wasn't really into the product, uh, I, I think the product is a great side effect right. of the work, and um, I, I enjoy the product as any theater person would. But for me, what's really important and what's really going on is how did we get to that product? So it's the process. The process. And I I feel that the process is in and of itself a product. So do you think, is that, is in a nutshell, what the difference is between teaching drama and teaching theater? I think so, for my personal yes. self. I think, um, I whenever anybody ever asks me what I do, I, I say, well, I'm a drama teacher, 
I'm not a theater teacher. Right. And then I explain to them what I think the difference is between that, those two concepts. Like a theater teacher is someone who is teaching acting techniques and um, vocal warm ups and. Uh, you know, the, the goal is the product. At Things the end. that are going to improve the product. Yeah. Yeah. So, what it's going to look like on the stage, the final goal, which is this great performance. Yeah. And that's awesome stuff. And anybody who does that is amazing. It's a different skill set. You know, like the, the skills that are go into performance um, help, you know, there are life skills too, like, the, you know, the, the, how we communicate. Um, but it's a different skill set. And then what are you doing? What I'm doing, at least what I see the difference is that as we go along towards a product, we're talking about things like why would we make these decisions? Why would we, um, why would we use this tone of voice instead of that tone of voice? Why would we uh, choose this piece of music over that piece of music? How did it make me feel? Where where would I use these skills in another area of my life? That's a really important one, is it? That yeah. it's really connecting what's happening in drama class to what's happening in their life. Yeah, because, I mean, I'm under no illusions that any of my kids are ever going to become, uh, you know, Brad Stars. Pitt or Angelina Jolie. If I ever have one of those people, it won't be because I somehow imparted upon them some great piece of knowledge it will be because they are skilled talented creative people Mm -hmm. and they just they came to me and I was lucky to have them in my room I think that what I'm really doing with my kids is preparing them for the real world preparing them to do uh, everyday average tasks like being in a relationship or you know raising kids and working in an environment with people that you maybe don't have a lot in common with or you don't enjoy them um, that's what I'm teaching my kids in my classroom. Yeah. And How do you do that in a drama context? Mostly through analyzing the, the things that we do in class. So right. in it's, in it, I really do, I want to specify that it is about the analyzing. It is about the reflection. Yeah. Reflection is a major, major component in the drama classroom. And what you're doing is you're making decisions with the kids, and the kids are making their own decisions creatively. Mm-hmm. But what, what I do with them and what I highlight is, why did you make that decision? Yeah. And if you had made a different decision, what impact would it have had on the work? Right. And let's try out that other decision. I think that's really key to uh, being able to live in the world with, with other human other beings. Other people. Yes. Well, instead of, well, I think very specifically, what was the, uh, what's the class that we, uh, that we just finished? What are they called? Yeah, we have school specialized to work. school to work kids. School to work. And mm-hmm. it just, it could be so easy for these kids to just um, shut down and, and just live in, in within themselves. Mm-hmm. Right? Because mm-hmm. they're not going to go to college or... or Probably not. Yeah. They might. I mean, but it's, it's not... It may not happen for them yeah. right away. It might be something that they would g- achieve 10 years from now, um, but but it's not something that they will probably do right away out of high school. They'll most likely get a job right away. I have to say, I from because I was, I was here and uh, I'm workshopping a, a play this week, I just think that a drama class like this is just, it seems to be vital for these kids to sort of like where else are they going to learn communication skills yeah you know and and yet that this is sort of an anomaly that they have this isn't it yeah it is it is kind of sad in a way i remember when i was in school um not so long ago no not so long ago at all (laughs) Uh, we actually had diction class oh my gosh yes voice and diction and mrs wood was teaching that along with typing for the girls especially. I had typing. I was one of the last classes that used a manual. Isn't that crazy? (laughs) Not so long ago. It really wasn't. (laughs) But um, we had those opportunities when we were in school, and it was important to speak clearly and articulate, and, you know, they really worked on presentation skills and how you would... uh, present yourself to an interview, for example, yeah. or, or to a group of people who are analyzing your product or whatever. Um, but we don't have that really in school anymore. But 
you know, we do that in drama class. People yes. People don't realize that that's what we're doing every day. Pretty much. You know, and uh, it's it's really key. I think it's really important for all students. I wish it was a mandatory course. Yeah. I wish it was mandatory every year for all students. Because yes. the stuff that we do in this class is, is invaluable. And to life. I don't know how we can explain that to the general public, but this class... It, you don't have to be a star. You don't have to be even comfortable on stage. What what we're teaching is um, that you can look at something from various perspectives. Yes. Make a decision about what works well and what doesn't. The idea that a decision is, you know, you can always make another decision. Mm-hmm. And that's so important. And then to reflect on it and mm-hmm. that, that to, to formalize, to actually formalize an opinion. It's, and this is why I think this, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, and be able to back yourself up because you've got experience. We've played it out in this classroom. Yeah. That's the other thing, too, is play is so important mm-hmm. in the learning of all people. Not just little kids. All people. We need to play. And that's how we're going. I mean, I think that's how we're going to engage students, future students. Everything is, is gamified now. The saddest thing is that you know, in in these these there are these studies that happen. You know, what do you most value in a worker? I value creativity and independent thinking. Mm-hmm. What are the two things that we have basically taken out of school? Creativity right. and independent thinking. Yeah, because here we have developed all these rubrics, and yeah. so basically we're telling the kids what it is that we expect. And I mean, a rubric is a great thing. Sometimes it helps kids achieve to a certain degree, a certain level of expectation. But also our rubric takes out any question of what we could do creatively on our own because I have to meet these expectations that the teacher has set forth. Mm -hmm. And the thing about a drama room is that there's not always a rubric for how you interact with a person who's uh, blind or um, a person who finds themselves pregnant and they aren't prepared for that. There's no rubric for that. Human interaction, there's no rubric. Because it's going to be different each time. So, I don't know. It's just an amazing thing. It's it, Miracles happen in this classroom, really. I, I see it all the time. Just in just in terms of somebody's self-confidence, you know. Somebody's, yeah. somebody well, who gets it. Two girls in this classroom that we're just um, playing with this week. These two kids, don't, they don't speak clearly. They are very quiet. They're little, tiny little mice. And I said girls you have to speak clearly and and I want to hear your voices and we're going to work on you developing an authoritative voice so that you can get your needs met cuz they need Who's going to speak for them yeah, they in, need in the to world speak for themselves so that's what we're working on and it's coming you know I can actually hear them speak and they're offering ideas now not regularly but they are doing it that's all that really counts sometimes it just takes it takes time it takes time. Yeah. All right. You have to go. I do. You do. That's fine. Thank you. So, um...